Over the last eight months, we had three wonderful retreats and this is the last one. This is going to be a bhakti retreat. So while we are here, let us drink from this ocean of devotion. And as the theme of this retreat, I have chosen a bhajan written by Kripaluji Maharaj that expresses wonderfully the entire science of devotion. When I first came to Maharaji's ashram, that was the time he had just written this. So his instruction for me was that you will not come for sadhana, you just go and study. All day long study the scriptures. But at night, 9.30, 10 o'clock, when I would return in the hall, he would be making people sing this and he would stop in between and then he would explain the lines. So I used to hear from outside, from the window, and the nectar that was pouring, that has got ingrained in the mind. So this is a kirtan which he called Bhakt Bhavana. He wrote it as the title. Bhakt Bhavana means what should be the sentiment of a devotee towards the Divine Beloved. This is expressed so wonderfully in this kirtan. I don't think we will find the science of devotion explained in such brief to such depth as we will find in this. Tum mere the mere ho, mere rahoge. Beh kun ab beh kaane se Tum mere thi mere ho Mere raho ge Beh kun ab beh kaane se Tum mere thi mere ho Mere raho ge Behkun ab behkane se It begins with Sambandh Gyan, realization of our relationship with God. There was once a person going on a highway who met with an accident. His car rolled over to the side and he was thrown out of the car 
badly wounded. One villager saw him in that pitiable condition. The villager put him in his bullock cart and brought him to the hospital which was about seven miles from that accident spot. The doctor saw and decided that an immediate operation was needed. Blood was required for that operation. That villager said, check my blood. The blood group matched. He gave his blood. He found out from that person's diary, which he got from his pocket, his relatives' numbers, and he called this person's family members there. Some medicines were required. He purchased medicines from the nearby store and supplied them. This person was operated upon and after a few hours he came back to consciousness. He found in his room his wife. He was delighted. Ah, oh, so nice to see you. He found his son. He was delighted. His parents. And then he looked at this villager with his shabby torn clothes and he curled his nose. Who is this? The family member said, do you know, he is the person who has saved your life. He saw you lying in the ditch when you were totally helpless. He put you in his cart and brought you seven miles to this hospital. Really, I am indebted to you. Do you know that he gave his blood to enable your operation to be done when it was critical? Oh, I can never repay my debt to you. Do you know that he also went and purchased medicines for you? Really, you are like my brother. Do you know he is the one who informed us and that is why we are here. Well, from today, we are deeply bound together. When he came to know this person did so much for him, the love developed. Similarly, if we can realize what God does for us, our love for God will also develop. And what better day can there be to contemplate over all the graces of God than today when all over the world people are celebrating Thanksgiving Day. This earth that we sit upon that has been endowed with the ability to produce plants and vegetables by the millions, we take it for granted. But it's not for granted. How did those particular physical and chemical properties come into the soil? It was arranged by God. So we are grateful to Him for all that we eat and the air that we breathe, a little change in the chemical composition. It happens close to some plants, too much of sulfur, people become poisoned. So what if this chemical composition of the air was not what it is? We would not have been alive. The interesting thing is, those items that are absolutely vital are most abundantly available. We can't live without the air for five minutes and it's all over us. And then we have the ocean nearby Galveston and we have all wondered since childhood while growing up, why is the ocean salty? I have also been wondering why was it salty like all children growing up.
until finally it hit me if it was not salty it would have bred so much of disease and infection it would have been exceedingly unhygienic for the entire world but by making it salty god ensured that it retains its hygienic conditions and antiseptic properties so all this the sunlight that we receive we take for granted but we should be thanking god for it after all it's not produced by itself there is an incessant nuclear reaction going on there and the magnitude of that nuclear reaction people make their estimates one estimate i read was that it's equal to 1 million nuclear power plants and there are no chernobyl kind of disasters that take place the sunlight reaches us at the perfect temperature and we go out in the sun and bask in the sunlight what are you doing swami ji i am savoring vitamin d from the sunlight that is coming so all these are gifts of god kripalu ji maharaj says there are so many gifts that if somebody started writing them a whole book would be filled up after all we exist because of him nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadhati kaman this is a mantra from the shvetashvatar upanishad it also exists in the munduk upanishad and also in the kathopanishad it says our soul that is we are eternal not by our own prowess but because the eternal god is sitting inside the soul and granting it eternality and we are sentient we possess the quality of life not by our own powers or energies but because the supremely sentient god is seated inside our soul here atmani tishthati and from inside he is granting us the life force that we call consciousness sentience and that is why we are us if god left us for even a moment our personality would cease to exist so we exist because of him in innumerable ways we are indebted to him the more we realize the graces we have received the more we will grow in devotion oh he has done so much for me moment we appreciate the extent of our bond with him that love naturally develops there is an example that maharaj ji is fond of giving from the indian culture you know indian culture is of arranged marriages so two girls are sitting in the park and one boy is sitting on the opposite bank, bench and staring at them and sometimes making some lewd gestures one girl gets annoyed who is this loafer how dare he she lifted up her slipper her saheli friend said what are you doing don't you know he is the boy to whom your parents have got you engaged <laughs> really the chappal goes down and love fills up in the eyes ah, how does he look oh he is quite handsome 
she has accepted he is mine and that love has immediately manifested with god there is no need of any engagement ceremony or exchange of rings <laughs> because our connection with him is since eternity so what is our relationship with him now in gross terms we are used to saying he is our father we are his children in all religious traditions they say like this we are the children of god our father who art in heaven and the veda say amritasya vai putra the supreme lord himself in the vedas is declaring that all the souls that exist are my little children so this is one level of understanding of our relationship with god that we are his little children however for those who wish to go even more deeply there is a finer nuance to this knowledge because the fact that we are the children of god does not answer many questions for example if we are his children we should be like him from an elephant a baby elephant is born from a giraffe a baby giraffe is born you don't have deers being born from dogs and cats being born from horses so if we are god's children why are we not like him he is full of knowledge bliss and love and we his little children are suffering in this world in ignorance getting knocked around by the waves of maya repeatedly experiencing the cycle of life and death so how come we are the children of god shri krishna clarifies this in the bhagavad gita mama ivansho jeevaloke jeevabhuta sanatanah this is the seventh verse of the 15th chapter and the same knowledge is in all the scriptures chinmatram shri hare rancham sukshma maksharam avyayam this is the vedas ansho nana vyapadeshat this is the brahma sutra ishvara ansh jeeva avinasi the ramayan states all these scriptures are telling us that we are not god's children in the manner as kids are born to the husband and wife in this world then we are little fragments of god and being his tiny fragments in a manner of speech we can say we are his children like you can say that this piece of rock is a child of the mountain or a drop of water is a child of the ocean similarly we are tiny fragments of god he is the anshi the whole and we are the ansh the part so being a little part of god we can consider ourselves to be his children however this is deeper knowledge than the previous one but it is still not complete if we wish to go even deeper then the scriptures explain us at a deeper level because people can ask 
does God get fragmented? Is God like a boulder? You break him with a hammer and he is broken into umpteen parts and we are one of them? Firstly, God doesn't get fragmented. And if ever he does get fragmented, Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachyate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva, Vashishyate. He is so perfect and complete that if there is a fragment of him, that will also be perfect and complete. He is infinite. What is 0.00001% of infinity? Infinity. Similarly, the Ish Upanishad tells us that God is so infinite that if there was a fragment of God, that would also be the infinite God. So people say that how can we be God's little fragments? So this is answered in the Paramatma Sandharb. Na chattanka chinna na pashana khandava tat chinna stat khando jiva. The soul is not a fragment in the way that a hammer is used to fragment a boulder. Then, shaktitve naivan shatvam vyanjayati. The soul is a fragment of the energy of God. Just like you have the sun and you have the rays of light. So the rays of light are the fragments of the sun. It's a fact. When the ray comes through the window, you say the sun has come. Draw the curtains. The sun has come into the temple room. Yeah, there it is. But the temperature of the sun is million degrees centigrade on the outside. If the sun is here, how come we are still alive? No, 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 it's not the sun. It's the ray of the sun that has come. So the ray is of not a direct fragment of the sun. It's a fragment of the energy of the sun. Similarly, we souls are tiny fragments of God's energy. So what are the energies of God? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Krishner Ananto Shakti, Tate Tin Pradhan, Chit Shakti, Maya Shakti, Jeev Shakti Na. Antaranga Bahirangas Tatastha Kari Vare, Antaranga Swarup Shakti Savare Upare. Kripaluji Maharaj, he writes the same thing in his Bhakti Shatak. Shakti Man Ki Shakti Aganit Yad Pi Bakhan Radhe Radhe Tin Mah Maya Jeev Aru Paratri Shakti Pradhan Radhe Radhe God has got infinite powers, infinite energies. However, for the sake of simplifying and understanding, we can categorize infinite powers into three parts. One is his Parashakti, divine power. That is the all-powerful energy of God by which he manifests his divine abode, Golok, Saket Lok, Vaikunt Lok, by which he manifests his divine form, Chidanandamaya, by which he manifests the sweetness of his form, Rup Madhuri, Leela Madhuri, sweetness of his flute, and reveals his sweet divine pastimes 
All this is a manifestation of his internal power. And by that power, he is keeping himself hidden from us. He is sitting inside all of us, but we have no awareness of it. So he tells Arjun in the Bhagavad Gita, Naham Prakashah Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samavritah Arjun. The souls of this world are unable to perceive or reach me because I have put a curtain of yoga maya on myself. This curtain of yoga maya, yoga maya is that divine power. That's the first power of God. And that power manifests in the personal form as Radha, Sita, Durga, Kali, etc. We will be discussing more about the Divine Mother as the Kirtan progresses. Radhe Radhe and a very warm welcome to all of you to our JP Radha Krishna Temple weekly satsang. We are in this session going to have interactive session discuss the main key away, main points, takeaways that we have learned from Swamiji's lecture. What a beautiful series that we are starting today. This is my favorite, all-time favorite um, bhajan, kirtan, and absolutely in love with that bhajan. Very happy to be, um, that we are going to be starting this. And then we also invite all the uh, participants. Um, we have shared Zoom code in our, if you are on YouTube, we have shared Zoom uh, uh, link in the comments and um, description. You can join via Zoom to participate and have live interaction with our uh, this uh, segment. So to begin with um, today's lecture, Tum Mere Te Mere Ho Mere Raho Ye, uh, Swamiji starts with what is, the, what is the most important, what are the, I would like to just touch upon two or three main points and then invite from our participants to get into the discussion or something that touched you, something that has really, uh, you know, connected well with you uh, on Zoom session, raise your hand um, and our moderators will take you, um, will uh, let you uh, speak. So this entire series is, uh, Swamiji starts with what is the main bhakti bhavna, that's what he labels this whole kirtan. And what is the main um, sentiments, right? As a devotee, we all are on spiritual journey. And it is extremely important to develop right sentiments, right mindset in order to progress on this path. So he talks about the knowledge of what is first begin with what is the main knowledge and our relationship with God, 
that we need to understand in this entire 30 minutes lecture that we just watched. And he also touched upon like how kind, merciful God is, all the vital things that we need in this world for our existence, they are available free, in abundance, no price. And if you were to even write it down, Swamiji said, notes and notes and books and books will get filled up to write down all the gratitudes, all the things we have been blessed with. And um, so on that note, I would like to invite um, participants either from our prayer hall or uh, people who are online to talk about something about what is it that we are grateful, what is it that something touched you in this lecture, and then later on, he, uh, Swamiji goes into the energy of God. Um, and we will go into that. But first portion of this uh, interactive session, raise your hand if you would like to express something that has touched you in this lecture and also something that we as devotees, as sadhaks, what are the things that we feel? How can that inspire us to progress further? Come forward and share your inspiration. We will be together. Here we have, oh, all right. We have Varsha, uh, and uh, let's get Varsha on um, camera as well as on sound, audio. How are you, Varsha? Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Fine, thank you. By the way, I must say, uh, before we, uh, you start, Varsha, today is uh, actually, I would like to give a big round of applause to our Kirtan team. It was out of the world experience. People who are present in the Radha Krishna temple can feel it with the presence of Radha Krishna, but this experience is being shared with all the devotees. And uh, we are so blessed to sing Sri Maharaj's Kirtan and have this opportunity to in, um, absorb ourselves in devotion. So two thumbs up and kudos to entire team for a wonderful, wonderful Kirtan, kirtan session and great Kirtan Varsha. Go ahead. Thank you, Shriyaji. Uh, Radhe Radhe, everyone. Uh, my takeaway from uh, Swamiji's discourse today is Swamiji has beautifully told that God has been very kind. Um, I'm adding on to the second point, uh, Shreyaji. God has been very kind. He has um, gifted all of us with the beautiful sources which are important for life. So what uh, I believe Swamiji is trying to tell us is we must count God's blessings every single day and we must be thankful to God for all that he has given us and we must make the best use of his blessings for our own good and development thank you Varsha, so anything specific you want to say on the spiritual journey that you think we we are grateful let's i in general yes all of us are grateful for lots of things but since we are on path of devotion as devotees tell me something one thing that you feel being so grateful on this path of devotion that God has bestowed upon you. Something that you want to share on that? Uh, being in the path of devotion gives one a lot of peace of mind. I must say that's my experience. And uh, one must really make a sincere attempt to take the path to feel it. And they themselves will understand the positive outcome. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone from the audience uh, from our online would like to share something? Or come online, raise your hand. We do have quite a few people. And here I see Gagan Nandaji is raising his hand. If our moderators can please recognize. Gaganji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Shreyaji, and everybody. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So 
tell us what is it um, you want to share or something that really t touched you in today's lecture or that you would like to share? Yeah, certainly. I thought it's just a wonderful coincidence. I, I tend to many times see how connections are made from something you hear or see versus something that I came across very recently. So this is a true fact, less than 15 hours ago in the Bhagavad Gita study class that Mummy and I conduct on Saturday nights, we actually covered chapter three, verse nine and onwards. And believe it or not, chapter three, verse nine actually has the similar content that Swamiji talked about at the beginning of his introduction to this whole section in the video. And he talks about in that chapter in the commentary about the system of God's creation, all the vegetation, the life, the air, the nutrients, the sun, all the energy and everything that is there for our use, how it is of course created by God. And many times we all don't realize or appreciate that we really should be giving back to that entire system for continued sustenance. So I thought it was just a very uncanny coincidence that just as I said, just a few hours ago, we covered that it's used as a platform for Swamiji to bring up this entire Bhakti Bhavna section and then of course he got deep into the you know, spiritual aspects of it. So I think another takeaway for me is that often we, as, as I said, we tend to overlook that all of this is due to God and his energy and power for us. Many times we might say, I did this or associate ourselves as a doer, or even from a charity standpoint, we might say, I donated this today. I think maybe if we change that mindset into, I gave back this small portion today, of what God has actually bestowed upon us, that may actually encourage much more, you know, sacrifice or yagna as that verse and in this uh, series we talk about. So I thought I could really relate to that in a very real time uh, context. That's very nice, Radanji. It's really, um, you know, it's so nice that you shared your this Bhagavad Gita um, like, um, session dis uh, discussion that. So many things, the creation of the, this entire world uh, is really a mind blowing and how everything is working so perfectly and whatever we need, how everything is being made available and um, really appreciate you bringing this point forward, uh, uh, connecting with the, uh, which look was it uh, from Bhagavad Gita or chapter that you were discussing Gadranji? Are you there, Karanji? He's you can unmute. unmute. Yeah, I, I'm off mute now. It's a chapter three, verse nine. It's about yagna as a sacrifice to the supreme versus the later parts, which is you know celestial based uh, sacrifices. So chapter three, verse nine. So wonderful, wonderful. Really appreciate you bringing the Gita session knowledge into this. And by the way, thanks for your wonderful uh, Bhagavad Gita sessions. People are loving that on Saturday night. So and. Um, energy of God. Um, so uh, moving on forward to the energy of God that Swamiji goes into that how are we children of God? If we take this forward the lecture in the second portion he goes into understanding our relationship with God and we are his children. So would anyone like to say how are we his children? If God is so perfect, so knowledgeable, so divine why we as children are not? Swamiji did not answer that, so maybe we shouldn't touch on that, but he does go into, under, he, he touches upon that, and then he goes into explaining how God and we are part of him as his energy and um, the forms of energy. So, but still, if anyone would like to talk and share on this aspect of uh, the se second half of the lecture, raise your hand. I'm going to pick your names if you don't raise your hand. So one rule is that either you speak or I'm going to request you to speak if you don't speak. <laughs> because I cannot keep on speaking by myself. In order to have a conversation, we need two-way two dialogue. Okay, who is going next? All right, please. Uh. 
Radhe Radhe, please introduce yourself. So actually we should have everyone say their names so that people uh, also get to know all the family members of our RKT satsang. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, we are very grateful to the Lord to make it possible for us to be here this morning. And we are also thankful to Swamiji for imparting such great knowledge, um, inspiring us. The, also thankful to the Kirtan group um, that set the mood, the mood for us to be participants, and we really enjoyed it. Uh, some takeaways from uh, Swami Ji's lecture. Uh, first, I would like to say, uh, Swami Ji explained that each of us is a fragment or a part of parcel of the Lord. I think um, that is very, very important because. You know, for me, I really want to understand what is my relationship with God. And he, so, he did such a perfect job in explaining even the levels uh, until, you know, how we get deeper into it. And I'm very grateful for that. Also, what I, another takeaway is that Swamiji to my mind, is saying that despite all the challenges, all the rigors, all the limitations to what we're going through today, there is some goodness. Goodness exists. We are to recognize and appreciate that goodness and create more goodness in this way I think we would be peace with ourselves and peace with God. So I'm very happy to be here this morning. I'm sure my wife is also. We are very happy and we were looking forward for this. Thanks all. We do appreciate it. Thank you, Surinderji. You know, it's so nice to see you today in Satsang, you and Savitriji both. After such a long time, uh, I really... I'm looking forward to the days that this COVID um, comes under control, the vaccine is taken care of, and then we have this whole jam packed with the way we used to have Kirtan in all good days. So thank you so much. And I also appreciated the point that you brought out. Like, you know, we are truly grateful to Swamiji for bringing all the wonderful knowledge that he has bestowed upon us in the way we understand. So that point in um, all the ecosystem, you said we are grateful to the, the, the entire things, whatever, everything is making us possible. The Kirtan team, the satsang, the temple, um, everyone. So we are truly, truly humbled and grateful for this opportunity and having Swamiji on our path for teaching us, guiding us, at our own level, baby, baby, small baby step, so that we can progress and reach the ultimate, the highest goal of this human form. Anyone else? I will give one more chance. If anyone else wishes to share their inspiration, anything you wish to share uh, on this today's uh, satsang, please raise your hand. Anyone from online? One more person from online. I'm going to call your name if you don't raise your hand. So I request at least one more participation. Turn on your cameras and let's raise your hand. One more person. Suman Kumarji. Sumanji? Are you there?
Okay. Uh, anyone else from online? We would like to uh, have online participation so that, you know, it encourages more people to, um, to express themselves. <laughs> Saurabhji is raising hand. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out in these Zoom sessions who all are. Okay, Saurabhji. Once again, Hello, thank everyone. you so much for, you know, you uh, coming forward. Please uh, tell us what inspired you or what is it that you would like to share today? Yeah, so on the second part, um, uh, the Swamiji said that we are small fragments. We are the children of the God. And uh, I remembered a little bit piece of poem that I read a few years ago and it called like there is an inner battle going on between the soul and uh, and uh, what I consider I like my body intellect it may be anything and there is this battle going on between the soul and I and ultimately so it beautiful comes from... I'm so happy you are bringing up this please tell us <laughs> yeah so this battle is going on and this battle extends over different life spans and ultimately it comes down to I am a, a I am a droplet uh, I'm a droplet in an ocean of conscious you are a droplet you are a, a ocean of consciousness and I'm a droplet in that ocean of consciousness so that was kind of the similarity that was given and uh, it was very similar to the way that Swamiji explained that um, you know uh, we are uh, not exactly the fragments, but the rays uh, that uh, we, we, we are the rays of the that almighty sun. And we have that uh, tiny bit of, uh, you know, fragments within us that can actually light up the eye that, that we have. So that was kind of similarity I was thinking about. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So nicely well said, truly appreciate it. And um, the analogy that you gave, it's so beautiful. Swamiji uh, explains uh, that, you know, it's like God is infinite, right? And it's an ocean. And even if you take a small fragment of that, you are still having that um, same energy, same uh, characteristics that fragment can have. So truly appreciate you coming forward and sharing this beautiful um, analogy and your inspiration. Um, with that, we would like to um, move on to our, uh, before we get into our teeth, few s announcements we would like to share. We are, uh, as part of our Center for Indian uh, Culture and Education, many new sessions and uh, offerings are being made available. Do check them out. The, one that is coming up on this Tuesday, that is Tulsi Ramayan, starting a brand new program. And you are going to love the sweetness and exploration of this Ram Bhakti. Um, so do check that out. It's on Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time. We also have daily wisdom of Bhagavad Gita sessions every evening from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. In addition, I would like to mention Prem Yoga um, Community. It's a platform, yoga and meditation offering of JKO. We are going to have lo uh, many offerings available through Prem Yoga platform. Check out the information. You can attend yoga, meditation, relaxation classes, and there are many free sessions as well. So. Check out that program and uh, take full advantage of that. With that, we will um, start with our Aarti for Radha Krishna Maharaj Sitaram. Thank you so much and uh, see you next Sunday.
श्री राधा कृष्ण भगवान की जय श्रीमद सदगुरु सरकार की जय गजानन गणपति भगवान की जय पवन सुद हनुमान जी महाराज की जय सीता राम चंद्र भगवान की जय गोपेश्वर महादेव की जय परम पूज्य श्री जगत गुरु कृपालो जी महाप्रभु की जय राधा कृष्ण मंदिर के जय 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 श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे सोमवार के दिन में कल सवा छह बजे सिक्स फिफ्टीन को सायंकाल भगवान गोपेश्वर महादेव का अभिषेक होगा तो सभी लोग जूम के ऐप के द्वारा देख सकते हैं और मंगलवार के दिन में यहाँ बहुत ही सुंदर भगवान 
हनुमान जी का हनुमान चालीसा का पाठ एवं हनुमान चालीसा और तेल सिंदूराभिषेक भगवान इस बार तो अभी मंथली अभिषेक भी है सीताराम भगवान का तो सभी लोग अवश्य जुड़े मंगलवार तीसरा मंगलवार में सीताराम भगवान का अभिषेक होता है मंथ में और राधा कृष्ण भगवान का सेकंड मंगल गुरुवार के दिन में मंथ में और राधा कृष्ण भगवान का अभिषेक होता है तो सभी लोग जुड़े इस मंगलवार को भगवान हनुमान जी का अभिषेक एवं सीताराम भगवान का और हनुमान चालीसा पाठ के द्वारा भगवान को हम प्रसन्न करेंगे और टेंपल का कैलेंडर सभी यहाँ जो भी भक्तगण हैं तो विशेष करके सब लोग अपने अपने घर में कैलेंडर भगवान का बहुत ही सुंदर छपा हुआ है उसमें भगवान की फोटो भी एक साइड में है और कैलेंडर के जितने भी एकादशी है अमावस्या है पूर्णिमा है और टेंपल के जितने भी इवेंट हैं वो सब उसमें उल्लेख किए हैं तो जरूर अवश्य ले जाएं बहुत ही सुंदर कैलेंडर है तो सभी भक्तों को निवेदन एक एक दो दो तीन तीन अपने परिवार के लिए ले जा सकते हैं राधे राधे